Today, there will be a communion assistant and altar guild training at 1145 following the late service here in the multipurpose room. Contact Arlita if you have any questions. Next Sunday, the Board of Caring will have a display to help honor our veterans. If you or a member of your family have served our country, please bring a picture during their military service years to the church office as soon as possible to be used in the display. Contact Lori Casey or Connie Johnston if you have questions. The Sojourners in Stitches Connect Group meets this Saturday, November 11th, from 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. All ladies are invited. No sewing machine experience required. Contact Karen Morrison if you have questions. The second Saturday's 7 Connect Group is headed to Luciano's in Mulvane this Saturday evening at 7 p.m. Contact Bruce or Kathy Trapp today if you'd like to go so they can make reservations. Our junior youth and their parents will be taking orders for honey to help benefit the Boys and Girls Ranch in North Dakota with 30% of the sales going to the junior youth account. These Honey Sundays will be held the next two Sundays, November 12th and the 19th between worship services. The church council will meet next Sunday, November 12th at 715. Please contact Richard View if you cannot attend the meeting. The Sunday school teachers will meet next Sunday at 1145 in the multi-purpose room. And also next Sunday, don't forget about the special voters meeting to be held between services November 12th. And yes, it's time to begin making plans for the Christmas Eve worship service. Please let us know if your junior youth will be participating in the 6 p.m. Christmas Eve worship service. See the information table to indicate if they will or will not be participating. You will also find a rehearsal schedule at the information table. Contact Arlita if you have questions. And, of course, don't forget to come back for Wednesday Evening Ministries this week. There's something for everyone from 6.30 p.m. to 7.45. And remember, these aren't the only things happening this week at Risen Savior. Be sure to check those great pages to learn more on how you can get involved and share the love of Christ.
God's people said. Amen. Whoa. Don't you feel better after that video? <laughs> Honesty. It kicks in, doesn't it? Today is All Saints Day. It's a time where we, we think about all the people who have gone before us. It can be depressing as we think about, God, why did you let that happen? Or we can change our attitude too and begin to see through his eyes and not ours. That's why it's tied not just to All Saints Day, it's tied to Matthew 5. Matthew 5 is called the B. time to check our attitudes. Let's rise as we learn how to do that. We begin our worship as we do all things. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. I know that my Redeemer lives. And in the end, he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh, I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I am not another. How my heart yearns within me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He'll wipe away every tear from their eyes no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away where O oh, death is your victory where O oh, death is your sting the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law but thanks be to God gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ the Lord be with you let's pray Today, as we celebrate God's grace in the lives of his saints, we remember and give thanks for those who have gone before us to their eternal rest. For none of us lives to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. We live, we live to the Lord. We die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they rest from their labor for their deeds will follow them. It's time to do some remembering. Let's pray. With reverence and affection, we remember before you, O everlasting God, all those who have finished their race, sacrificed so much and kept the faith including all our departed friends and relatives. Keep us in union with them here through faith and love toward you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that hereafter we may enter into your eternal presence and be numbered with those who serve you and look upon your face in glory forever. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Jesus. For an arm you be still, will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. be seated. John has been exiled to the island of Patmos. He's reaching out to the church and he, he says, I, I, I want to encourage you, but I can't do it as, as pure and simple as you might like. So I'm going to give you some images to, to let you try and understand who God is and, and how he's active in your life every day every step of the way. So as he's using these word pictures, as he's using these images, imagine what he's saying to us. Church, this is Revelation chapter 7. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne in fr and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The lamb, the center of our thrones, the focus of all that we see. You know what that looks like? <laughs> That's First John. That's what he's going to talk to us about today, about what it means to really have the Lamb, Jesus Christ, 
sitting on our throne, not us, but him. 1 John 3. How great is the love of the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. So how do we do that? How do we pure ourselves in a way in which that hope is really in us? Well, there is only one sermon that Jesus ever preached that's recorded in Scripture. It's Matthew chapter 5. It's called, again, the B. I wonder why he spent so much emphasis talking about our attitudes. Please rise. We're going to join together in reading this as we share what it means to check our attitudes. And when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside, sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. And he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They'll be filled. Blessed are the merciful. They'll be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. They'll see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. They'll be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Great is your reward. And all the people said,
Man, how hard that is to do. Every day of our lives, every scenario in life, every, every event that transpires in our lives, for all God's people to say, Really? Is it that hard? And all God's people said, Amen. which means, yes, Lord, so shall it be. It's not just an acceptance of something we can't change. It's an embracing of what's happening in our lives. Whoa, I just lost a whole bunch of you right there. Embracing what is happening in our lives. Every step, every piece, every journey. Wait a minute, are you talking about when I got diagnosed with I'm supposed to be happy? You're supposed to say, amen. That's grabbing a hold of God and saying, Lord, I don't know the picture you're going to use with this. I don't know the big scenario of this. But you know what? That really doesn't matter. Because all I'm really doing is giving my life to you who already owns it. That's a man. So when our Lord in Matthew 5 is laying out this, this attitude check that he's calling us to, he, he's really doing that. He's saying, check your attitude. But here's a problem. I wanted to come up with all these different Bible references that, that have attitude in them. So I did, don't you love computers? I did a word search in King James for attitude. You know how many times the word attitude comes up in the Bible in King James? Zero. So I went, okay, ESV, English Standard Version. That's the one the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod says that's what we're supposed to use, right? So I pulled up my ESV and I said, attitude, find it. And it came up how many times? Zero. Why? I went to God's word for the nation. I, I, that's the problem. Now people are pulling out their phones going. Ooh. Pull up God's word for the nation and some of these other modern translations. Not, they're not translations, they're transliterations. But all these modern paraphrases of it. And attitude just popped up all over the place. Why? Because we know in our modern thought patterns, attitude. Has anybody here ever said to someone else, check your attitude? Don't look at your spouse. This is not a good time to do that. <laughs> check your attitude. We know what it means. So when we look at Matthew 5, it's called the B attitudes, but it never uses the word attitude. That's what it's all about though. It's how we look at life, how we look at things, how we look at events that transpire. A number of years ago, more than I want to count, that's my attitude. I was at an LWML district gathering here in Wichita and the speaker talked about something that really just was very resilient with me. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I get ready to take a vacation or go on a trip with the car, one of the things I want to make sure is that the windshield is spotless, right? Well, how long does it take when you're on the highway before this happens? <laughs> For the rest of the trip, what do you see? No, you stop at the next gas station and clean it off, right? No, you don't. You try and look past it. We're, am I the only one in here that does that? My eyes automatically just go, mm. What happened to the beauty? What happened to, to, to God's grace being shown in so many ways in, the, in, in what he does? All I see is, Welcome to attitude. What have we chosen to see? The Beatitudes. He's calling us to remember how 
blessed we really are. Wait a minute, all I saw was that bug. I didn't see how blessed I am. I just saw a bug. Squashed bug. Ugly. Yuck. Well, what does it mean to really be blessed? The Greek word for blessed is there. My English idioms tell me it's pronounced makur. No, it's not. It's maker. Is my focus on my maker or is it on all the stuff that the world, the devil, and my own sinful flesh has thrown at me? When my focus begins to change and it's not on all the stuff that's wrong and man, we can find them everywhere. Our focus begins to see the glory of God and we stay in his presence instead of the presence of. Ugh. Well, it's time to let attitude begin to check in. I love acrostics. Attitude changes things. How we're going to approach life, how we're going to approach events that happen, how we're going to approach things that are inevitable. So we've got a video for you, and I pray this is going to work well. I don't know this kid's name. Maybe you know him. Maybe you think you know him. But let's see if, if this works for you to see attitude. I don't want to go to the beach. Beach is too sandy. I want to play video games. The water's too cold. I want to stay home. It's too crowded. It's too hot outside. There's stingrays and loud seagulls and jellyfish and sand crabs and sharks. Do I'm gonna get eaten by a shark? I don't like sunscreen. I don't like the sun. I don't like swimming. I don't like the sand. I don't like the icky bathrooms. <sighs> I just want to stay home. What if I get a sunburn? What if I get stung by a jellyfish? What if I get seasick? What if I get sand in my mouth? What if I get disoriented? What if I drop my hot dog in the sand? What if I get lost? I hope you people know what you're doing. It's too hot. There's sand in my toes. There's sand in my swimsuit. There's sand in my head. The sun is too bright. The water's too cold. I draw my hot dog in the sand. I knew this was gonna happen. Are you kidding me with this? I look ridiculous. Wait, what? We're going on already? We just got here. I don't want to go home. Home is boring. There's nothing to do there. Ever met him? Maybe I should rephrase that. Ever been him? How much did he enjoy the beach? And it was all the beach's fault, right? Attitude changes things. I came across this. I've got a smaller print of it, but you got up there. This is what it says. Your attitude is a choice. Your attitude will determine your approach on life. Your attitude will determine your relationship with other people. Your attitude can turn your problems into blessings. Your attitude will help you handle failure better. It really just struck me as this idea that your attitude is so much a part of, of how you approach it. It doesn't necessarily change, and it usually doesn't change the outcome, but it changes what comes out of you. Friday, at Kenny's funeral, 
For 23 years, Kenny struggled with um, early onset Parkinson's and um, fought a very valiant fight. And the time came for him to go to be with our Lord. Friday at the funeral, we did something we don't always do. We, we passed the microphone and, and people, you know, would you like to share a story, something about Kenny? And it, very few people did. And then we had a meal and then the internment later. But the meal, man, the stories were, whew, there they are. Why didn't you share that during the service? And I just, I just couldn't. So we got to the cemetery and I said, okay, I got to do it. Before we start, I'm going to share one story about Kenny. When Kenny found out he had Parkinson's and understood what the tremors were all about, the shakes, the tremors, whatever you call them, this is Kenny. Those of you who knew Kenny know this. When Kenny found out that's what it was and the tremors were real and the tremors were going to stay with him the rest of his life, he said, I'm going to get a job at Lowe's. I can shake paint. <laughs> Attitude. What do you do with it? When life hands you this stuff between the world, the devil, and, yeah, these sinful bodies that are destined for not eternity, but for destined for death here in this world. What do you do with them? Do you get an attitude with, that turns us into these negative gritches that, that can't be happy about anything? Or do we get a different focus? That's why this text, this text that you read today is so powerful. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God, and that's who we are. You feel like a child of God? Well, until you take the time to understand what it means to, to, to let him really lavish his love on you. Well, I'm still waiting on that to happen. No, he's doing it every day. Anybody see the sunset last night? Anybody realize it's a full moon? Whoa. Wow. Those God sightings, those events where we let God really lavish. Well, I, I struggled with that word lavish because it, it's a word picture that is so different for each of us. So I, I'm just going to let you lavish for a moment. When you think of something that is lavish. You can look at your spouse. That's okay. Didn't get that one. Okay. It's kind of, yeah. What does it mean to lavish? Any chocolate lovers here? Lavish. Lavish. God is lavishing his love on and the purpose of his son through the forgiveness of our sins through new life every day the images are there the beauty, the spectacular nature it, it, it is so fantastic what God is doing where would that come from? it's all saints day it's all saints day That old hymn we started with, Behold a host arrayed in white. Thinking of what God has already given to those who have run their race and finished their course. But the image is lost unless we really let it come alive. A few miles north of here is the, the Catholic uh, retreat center. This takes me back so many times that I've been there for retreats and different events for our Kansas district. And um, if you go into their conference room, they have around it all these pictures of saints, okay, portraits, what have you. And they, they all have this uh, behind them. And I got to couch this because I got in trouble after first service. This is a group of pastors getting together, okay? 
And, and one of the pastors came up to me and he said, you're from here, aren't you? And I said, yeah. I said, why do they all have plates behind their heads? <laughs> now, I didn't answer it in first service, so I think I need to answer it here. Those aren't plates. They're halos. It's the image of receiving all the glory of God, and, and now they've received the crown of life. That's what awaits all of us through faith in Christ. But I, I want to take this to a place where I think we miss. How many people here are saints of God? I want to see every hand up. As a child of God, through faith alone in him, we are saints of his. We've received, hear that, we have received the crown of life. Why don't we live it? Hear these passages that he says. The lamb will be their shepherd. Anybody know Jesus Christ is the, the, your, your shepherd? Yeah, he is. And then it finished with this. He will wipe away every tear from their eye. So why do we keep getting them? Yeah, sometimes the world happens. Sometimes we do stuff and, man, that hurt. But what about that third one? Our own selves. How many times do we allow the joy of our salvation to go away? Because we're focused on something we, our attitude, needs to let go of. Reread the Beatitudes this afternoon and realize what he's really saying to us. Children of mine, I want your lives to be happy and filled with joy. Check your attitude. In Jesus' name, amen. Please rise. God's peace, it really does surpass all understanding. May it keep your hearts, your minds, your lives filled with his attitude toward you. In Christ's name, amen. Join with me. This is the Nicene Creed, our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, and God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit to the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, as spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we make offering to him.
made a comment this week that uh, I just didn't really understand or recognize how much is missed. This is called the offering or the offertory. Do you notice when we're showing these videos of things we're doing as a church? That is our offering. That's what we do in response to God's love for us is we offer back our talents, our gifts, our lives to his glory. Good job, church. Keep it up. In our prayers today, we recognize the new life God has granted to Kenny. We celebrate many, many, many things God has been doing through this congregation. And as we do so, I'd ask you simply to rise as we pray. Lord, it's so easy to make it about us, about the things that we do or that I do or that somebody else does, and we forget, no, it's the privilege of being a part of what you do through us. Let that be the message that, that is proclaimed, the message that happens. It's not about us. It's an attitude adjustment. It's always and always will be about you. Lord, in your mercy. To that end and always, Lord, let it fill us with a joy and an excitement. Not because we know what's coming next, but because we know you. And to know you is really what it's all about. That's the attitude adjustment that really kicks in. Whether it be life, whether it be death, whether it be trials, whether it be prosperity, it really doesn't matter. Because it's always and always will be about you. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we bring before you today so many things. We celebrate the life of Kenny and, and we, we recognize the new life you've granted to him. But our journeys continue. So help us, Lord, to have that attitude. An attitude that focuses on how you're going to take all the things that happen in our lives and work them for good for those who love you and who are called according to your purpose. Father, stuff happens, whether it be the world, the devil, or yeah, even our own fault. So today, always, give us a heart, give us an anticipation, give us an attitude that's not filled with what we see with our eyes, but what we know with our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray that you take all this as we lay it into your hands. That, O oh Lord, is where we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. We're made saints by the blood of Jesus. We are his beloved. We're heaven bound. And even, even as we celebrate all that the Lord has done for us, we so often turn away from the truth and walk in our own ways. So today, let's return to our Father, confess our sins. Father, you called us to be your children, but we must confess to you that we often live as ungrateful children and don't live our lives as you would have us do. Forgive us when we're not meek, when we don't hunger and thirst for righteousness, when we don't show your mercy when we're not pure in heart, and when we don't serve you as peacemakers, instead we live as troublemakers. Have mercy on us when we insult you and others and falsely say all kinds of evil words. We so often turn away and even forget your love for us. We crave your mercy, Lord. Forgive us, wash us clean, and forever call us your saints.
I ask you in the message to think about this, but I want you to make it really real in your heart right now. Behold what love the Father has lavished on us. That we should be called the children of God. And that's who we are. Wow. Receive that in all of its fullness. Through faith alone, children of God, all our sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on that very night in which he was betrayed, took bread. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat. This is my body. Given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sin. Do this as you remember me. He took the cup. He blessed it. He gave thanks. He gave it to them. He said, drink of it, all of you. This cup's the New Testament in my blood. Shed for you for the remission of all of your sin. This do as often as you drink of it, as you remember me. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Please be seated.
were standing around the throne, around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Please rise. May our Lord's very body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith to life everlasting. Depart today and always knowing his peace, knowing his love, knowing his presence, knowing his power. For we don't go alone. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor as he gives you his peace. Amen. Let's never forget on this journey we call life, this isn't the end. There's so much
Please be seated. Again, good morning. Please take the opportunity to see what God is calling you to, an attitude that does so much more than we could ever do by ourselves. Let's greet one another as we celebrate his love. Yeah. That's what I kept breaking. 